Volkswagen's improved Tiguan Allspace 7-seat SUV gets revised design, extra control and assist systems and new premium features. And of course it's still as practical as ever. Could it be all the car you'll ever really need? Potential buyers will probably see this model in just that way. Increasingly, it's no longer sufficient for a mainstream brand car maker to just offer a single mid-size 5 seat SUV. The market's now demanding that volume manufacturers also provide variants of such models that are lengthened enough to be able to incorporate a third seating row. Volkswagen couldn't ignore this trend and, and didn't bring in us this bigger all-space version of the Tiguan in 2017, which after generating over 1.5 million global sales was then updated four years on to create the car we're going to look at here. You might think it doesn't look much different. You'd be right. Volkswagen wasn't ever going to radically change a winning formula, but there's plenty that's new here. Primarily a range of enhanced technology features and more efficient diesel engines. As before, this all-space variant isn't much larger than the standard version. But as we'll see, the size upgrade is quite enough to make a real difference to the way you can potentially use this car. The problem for Volkswagen, though, is that this model's two almost identically engineered VW Group close cousins, Seat's Turaco and Skoda's improved Kodiak, offer much the same thing for a little less. And since this all-space model's original launch, we've seen useful revisions to key segment rivals like Peugeot's 5008 and Hyundai Santa Fe and all new versions of the Nissan X-Trail and Kia Sorento. So where does all that leave the Tiguan Allspace? If you're considering one, you'll need the industry's most comprehensive review, the car and driving road test to find out. Volkswagen hasn't changed anything about the way this updated Tiguan Allspace drives. And it hasn't changed much in terms of what lies beneath the bonnet either. Though the 2-litre TDI diesel engine that most customers will still want now gain the brand's more efficient twin-dosing technology and can all now be paired to freshly developed tech like the Travel Assist Semi Autonomous Driving System and IQ Light Intelligence Matrix LED headlights which adapt their beam according to the weather, road conditions and the environment you're driving in. All this stuff also features in the ordinary classic Tiguan range, of course. What isn't carried over here, probably because this all-space variant is made in Mexico rather than Wolfsburg, Germany, like an ordinary Tiguan, is the brand's e-hybrid plug-in hybrid drivetrain option. Pity that, because for our market, it would have given this super-sized Tiguan a useful extra selling point. Still, the freshly refettled 2-litre diesel units are frugal things, offering a choice of either 150 PS or 200 PS options. The lower-powered unit can give you DSG 7-speed auto transmission and or 4-motion four 4-wheel four drive extra cost. As you want with the much pricier 200 PS model, both these things come included. A very large proportion of the Tiguan Allspace sales are accounted for by four motion variants, a preference that's difficult to explain given the general hesitance of Tiguan folk to venture very far from a paved surface. True, with the four motion system fitted, the Volkswagen can tow a class leading 2,500 kilos, nearly twice as much as a conventional front driven version. But when was the last time you saw a Tiguan of any sort towing anything? or a Tiguan doing anything mildly SUV-like. That's not this car's raison d'etre. This Volkswagen is instead the stalwart of the school run, the 21st century idea of the uber-complete family car, especially in this all-space form. Increasingly, for that kind of use, customers for this model are turning to Petra power plants, usually the 150 PS 1.5 litre TSI unit that comes only with front wheel drive and with a choice of six speed manual or seven speed auto transmission. 
The rarer green pump alternative is the 2 litre TSI power plant, which comes only mated with the 4 motion system with a DSG auto and comes either with the 190 PS form or alternative with the 245 PS on tap. We can't really see why you need to go any faster in a Tiguan all space than is possible with this 190 PS model, which makes 62 miles an hour from rest in 7.7 .7 seconds on the way to 132 miles per hour. Faster 2 litre light petrol variants like this one though will be a rare sight on our roads. The main reason being that the primary reason for choosing a Tiguan has always been to lower the heartbeat, not to raise it. Still, should you be running late for the school run pickup or have something left burning in the oven, a faster model like this one we're trying here will be perfectly prepared to oblige by sticking to your chosen like through a series of its twisting turns, but there's very little driving pleasure to be had from the experience. The stiff MQB platform keeps body roll in check, the steering quite well weighted, if a little anaesthetised, and there's an XDS electronic differential lock system that breaks the inside wheels when cornering to help tighten your line around the bend. But none of it's enough to deliver anything approaching driving enjoyment, though to be fair to Volkswagen, you don't get that with competitor models either. Most volume models do without driving modes too, though you do get these on all Tiguan all spaces, equipped with four motion four wheel drive, courtesy of what Volkswagen calls four motion active control, activated via this rotary push button control below the gear stick. Turn it to the left and there are two tarmac orientated settings. You get a snow mode for really icy conditions, but the one you'll regularly be using is the default on-road setting. This gives you normal, eco or sport options to better suit your everyday driving, plus an individual mode that allows you to specifically tweak the settings for things like the steering, the drivetrain and the standard adaptive cruise control. Turn the active control dial to the right and you open up the options that prepare your Tiguan Allspace for proper use off the beaten track. Again, there are two settings available, this time branded Off-Road Auto and Off-Road Expert. Select one of these and almost everything about the car will instantly be optimised for off-piece use. Throttle response, steering feel, stability control thresholds and if your auto transmission gear shift timings too. Plus a useful hill descent system is activated to ease you down slippery slopes while dynamic cornering lights open up a brighter, wider light pattern to better help you spot potential obstacles. You'll probably want to fiddle with all these elements, but should you want to, the off-road expert settings provides menu options that allow you to do so. But does it actually work when you get on the rough stuff? Well, better than you think, given that this Volkswagen has a car-like monocoque chassis without much in the way of axle articulation. Plus there's obviously no low range gearbox and no way of manually locking the differential for the real sticky stuff. The clever electronics make up for a lot of this, allowing you to scrabble up steep and rocky inclines and keep moving, even when one or more of your wheels are hanging in the air. It also helps that the ride height is pitched properly for the family SUV, or at least it is with four motion models, which sits 200 millimetres from the deck, 11 millimetres higher than their front drive stable mates. All well and good, but of course you're far more likely to appreciate the four motion system's capability throughout the various conditions you'll meet on a bypass, not a by road. As usual with the four wheel drive system on SUVs of this kind, this one's a part-time setup of the sort that only transmits torque back to the rear axle when conditions become so slippery that it actually has to. Volkswagen have worked hard on this system in recent years to enable faster portioning of power to all four wheels via a process that provides pro activation of the rear clutch and quick operation of electronic differentials. Enough to provide all that important extra peace of mind for the school run on an icy morning. Which brings us back to where we started and the reason why the Tiguan Allspace folk often like to have the four motion setup fitted to this car. Something else they might like, which they won't have tried before, is the fresh generation of drive assist technology that's been ushered in by the updated version of this model. So let's finish this section by briefing you on that. 
What's important to understand here is the switch from passive to active technology. Previously, the ACC Adaptive Cruise Control System merely braked and accelerated the car based around a preset speed. Now, it uses the car's front camera system, GPS data and a host of sensors to drive the car predictively. So, when ACC is set, the car knows in advance about bends and roundabouts and oncoming traffic flow. Plus, this Tiguan will adapt itself to speed limits as you enter them. Adaptive cruise control is also an integral part of this car's clever new travel assist system, which above entry level trim is either standard or optional, depending on the spec level you select, and enables partially assisted so-called level two autonomous driving. The old model's traffic jam assist setup had an element of this pairing ACC technology with lane assist adaptive lane guidance so that the car could effectively drive itself in traffic queues. But because that tech would only work at up to 37 miles per hour, it was only good for urban conditions. So Volkswagen have developed Travel Assist, from which also works with ACC and Lane Assist, but provides partial assisted driving at highway speeds of up to 130 miles per hour. That's made possible by the integration of the predictive technology we just mentioned. And the addition here of a new capacitive steering wheel, which has to sense your hands upon its rim. Otherwise, if warnings are ignored, it would disable all the drive systems and bring the car to a gradual stop at the side of the road. That's one piece of technology we really like. The other is the superb trailer assist feature. A must, if you're like us, you have the occasional tow and you're useless at parking when hitched up. This system works with a rear view camera and takes all the hassle and guesswork out of this process, counter steering your trailer with commands you can make via a joystick control that would normally be the mirror adjust switch. It's really well thought out though, just like pretty much every other dynamic element of this Tiguan. In all space form, this Tiguan ought to be just slightly bigger, which of course it is. But somehow the changes made in creating this larger model have created something more, a model with the demur of a slightly larger SUV. This is the Tiguan, all grown up. Something that, of course, you can best appreciate from a profile perspective. This revised model gains an extra 27 millimetres of length to add to the 215 millimetres of additional length this seven-seater variant enjoys over the ordinary Tiguan. As before, from this central B pillar backwards, everything's been redesigned to allow for an extra 106 millimetres between the black plastic trim wheel arches, these housing rims of either 18, 19 or, as in this case, 20 inches of size. The bodywork of this bigger variant follows a different contour from that of the standard model and the rear part of the side window design features a sharper curve upwards where it rises directly behind the C-pillar. The roof's different too, featuring its own set of structural lines and framed by these standard silvered roof rails. As for the changes made to this updated model, you'll find nearly all of them at the front, which above entry level gains the latest two-dimensional Volkswagen emblem flanked on either side by an illuminated grille trim strip. As before, the bonnet is more upright at the front and carries different accents lines from the front to the rear. Otherwise, it's just as it was with the ordinary model, the wide grille emphasising the increase in width of the second-generation Tiguan design and flanked by headlamps that now come as standard with full LED illumination and with the right trim level can be had with advanced intelligent IQ light matrix tech. At the back, things are as they were before and pretty much as they are with any ordinary Tiguan chiselled lines surrounding the three-dimensional light clusters. An integrated diffuser incorporates the tailpipes and makes up the lower part of the bumper, while up above there's a neat rooftop spoiler. Most important though, of course, is as usual, is the stuff you can't see, especially the stiff, sophisticated Golf-style MQB platform underpinnings that lie beneath the precise, carefully contoured lines. Time to take a look inside. Often with a Volkswagen, it's the cabin that really sells the car to you. Is that the case here?
Well, it's certainly difficult to fault with a premium star feel that remains just a touch nicer than most obvious rivals in this segment. Thankfully, you're not treated to the slightly confusing digital screen fest that characterises the Mark 8 Golf. Volkswagen is preparing that for the next generation of this car. And if you happen to own an earlier version of this Tiguan Allspace, at first glance you might think that little has changed with this updated model. But look again, there's a lot in the detail that's different. You might not like all the changes quite as much as Volkswagen does. The fiddly touch sensitive buttons on this redesigned capacitive steering wheel for instance and the freshly added sliders for fan and temperature control obviously conceived in the days before we all started slathering our hands with liquid sanitizer. Better is this redesigned module for the climate functions and you'll like the now standard digital Cockpit Pro 10.25 inch instrument screen which finally consigns analog dials to history for Tiguan folk. This setup customises its layout to your preference in the presentation of the two main dials which can be configured to show everything from efficiency stats to off-road information and you can separately individualise the display between them which can showcase a whole range of different data but which looks most sophisticated when it's showing a navigation map. Other updates are more subtle, like the changes made to the glass-fronted central infotainment screen, which is still 8 inches in size with a 9.2 version optional, but which now runs on Volkswagen's latest MIB3 technology. This features over-the-air updates and a connectivity unit with an integrated eSIM that allows access into a whole new generation of in-car connectivity through Volkswagen's WeConnect media setup. Via this and the associated WeConnect phone app you can do things like integrate traffic information online into route guidance, check out data on fuel station locations and prices or use streaming services like Apple Music. And talking of smartphones, the Apple CarPlay and Android Auto mirroring services, your handsets are now done wirelessly. So there are no more unsightly wires all over the place crammed into every available USB port. There's also a much improved natural voice control system. Enough of infotainment. What else might you need to know about the front cabin of this Tiguan? We talked about the near premium feel earlier. True, if you really are being picky, you'll find some lower grade, scratchier plastics lower down the dash and the, the door cards, but for the most part, everything feels polished, classy and meticulously designed. Take these narrowly, precisely worked aluminium frame around the air vents, for example, everything falls to hand perfectly and predictably the ergonomics are pretty faultless. Take, for instance, the subtle orientation of the dashboard towards the driver. Getting settled behind the leather-stitched wheel is easy thanks to the wide range of adjustment on offer, particularly if you've got the more supportive ergo-active front seat design that's standard above base trim. The front seats on all variants include lumbar support, and on them you're sat higher up than in some rivals, so the view out is decently commanding and all-round visibility is fine. As for practicality, well, yes, that's been well thought through, or at least most of it has. The glove box isn't as big as it looks, an overhead compartment for your sunglasses has been forgotten, and this deep storage box between the front seats doesn't have any media connectivity points. Those, a couple of USB-C ports and a 12 volt socket and charging mat, are provided in an open compartment in front of the gear lever. But that leaves any handset you choose to connect in open to prying eyes. Otherwise, there's not much to gripe about. There are deep door bins that can hold a 1.5 litre bottler, natty dash top storage area and a cubby by the driver's knee, plus the twin cup holders provided by the electronic handbrake are concealed by a neat sliding cover. In addition, you get various MPV-like touches, two shallow cubbies that open out of the ceiling, drawers beneath both front seats and netted storage in the passenger footwell. All well and good, 
But you'll really want to know is just how much difference the lengthened all space design makes in terms of what you get further back. It's time to see. We'll start with the impact on passenger space and passenger access. That's aided hugely by these much longer rear doors. Most of the time, of course, the folks you're carrying will want to take a pew here in the middle row, where Volkswagen says they'll enjoy 54 millimetres more knee room than you get in the ordinary Tiguan. That's assuming this rear bench is set in the correct position. As in the ordinary model, it can slide backwards or forwards over a range of 180 millimetres. Headroom isn't too bad either. It's also nice to note that the seatbacks recline for greater comfort on longer journeys, and this central transmission tunnel isn't as awkwardly prominent as it is in some rivals. So if you do have to accommodate three adults back here, things will be slightly easier for the middle occupant. When there's only two of you, a central armrest folds to reveal a couple of integrated cup holders. We approve of these deep door bins and you'll get a three zone climate system with these separate rear compartment controls below twin vents plus 12 volts and USB C points. So what about the third row seating? Bigger mid-side SUVs and this one offer fold out luggage area seating that's distinctly cramped so our spatial expectations weren't great. Sure enough, if you pull up the shoulder catch to reach the very back and push the second row forward, you'll be accessing a necessarily rather restricted space. Volkswagen suggests that this area is ideally suited to folk of less than five feet, two inches in height. Children, in other words. All well and good, but that's most potential owners will want this third row seating for. But given that remit, you have to wonder why the brand has forgotten something as fundamental as fitment of an ISO fixed child seat fastening back here. To be fair to Wolfsburg, lots of its segment competitors make the same mistake, but so thorough is the company in other areas of its design, we'd expect better here. Should you really draw the short straw and be confined back here as an adult, then as usual in the mid-size 7C SUV, you'll find that the high floor line necessitated by having to make space for a four-wheel drive system means that your knees will be a little uncomfortably positioned up towards your chest. Still, if those in the middle row can be persuaded to push their bench forward, it'll be bearable back here for fully-sized folk on short trips. A tray is provided for the right-hand occupant, while the person on the left also gets a cup holder and access to a 12-volt socket. OK, so we've covered the additional room that this bigger all-space body style frees up for people. But what about packages? Well, let's check out the luggage area, accessed via this standard electronic activating tailgate, which can be specified as here to raise with a wave of the foot below the bumper if you're approaching the car laden down with heavy bags. Once the hatch is raised, the room you'll have to play with depends, of course, on whether the third row chairs are upright. If they are, you'll have 230 litres of carriage space. That's about the same as you get in the boot of a super mini and probably enough for an average-sized supermarket visit. The boot area is covered by this lid, below which is slotted the retractable tonneau cover you might need when you only want to use the middle seating row. Nice boot area touches include a 12 volt socket on the left, while on the right there's a fold out bag hook and this smart removable rechargeable LED torch. There's not much floor room space, though you can just about fit in a space saver spare wheel, which unfortunately we don't have here because it costs extra. If you need more room, then folding these third row chairs into the floor is easy using the provided shoulder catches, providing the second row seats aren't pushed all the way back. Once you've done that, you'll have up to 700 litres of space to play with, 84 more litres than you'd get in the similarly configured boot of an ordinary Tiguan. Still need more room? Well, if you have longer things to carry, it will help that the middle bench splits 40-20-40 so you can flatten the centre section and push through lengthy items like skis without disturbing a couple of passengers seated in the centre of the car. If you need to flatten the middle 
backrest, then you can do it by using these neat latches on each sidewall on each side of the cargo bay. That frees up to 1,775 litres of space, 120 litres more than an ordinary Tiguan can offer. This all-space model starts at a much higher price point than the standard Tiguan. At the time of this film in autumn 22, for this slightly bigger SUV Volkswagen was wanting just over 34,000 for the entry level, with the prices rising to around 46,000 at the top of the range. For reference, the standard body style is priced from just under 30,000, but that comes with a lower powered entry petrol unit that the all-space lineup doesn't bother with. The trim options are the same though, based life spec or if you want more and need the faster engines, there's a comparatively priced choice between either comfort orientated elegance or as in this case, sporty airline. For the reference with like for like engines and trim, this lengthier seven seat body style attracts a premium of just under three and a half thousand, more than its standard shape stable mates. Other Volkswagen SUVs, like the smaller T-Roc, have demonstrated a big swing in buyer preferences away from diesel to petrol. But that's not the case here. With the majority of lightly all-space spies expected to continue to choose the base 2-litre TDI 150 PS diesel unit. This is despite the fact that there's quite a premium to switch from the 150 PS TSI petrol power to the 150 PS TDI diesel, nearly 2,200 in fact. It's one of those base 150 PS models you'll need if you want the option of manual transmission, which saves you 1,625 over the DSG Auto. You have to have auto transmission if you want the four motion all wheel drive system. That's unavailable with the 1.5 petrol variant. Four motion is optional with the base diesel and becomes mandatory on the three other engines. The two litre TDI 200 PS diesel unit and both versions of the two litre TSI petrol power plant we're trying here. Got all that? Good. We'll be asking questions later. What you might really want to know, though, is how this model compares on price to its direct segment rivals. The obvious place to start is this Tiguan's all-space model's identically engineered VW Group cousins, the Seat Taraco and the Skoda Kodiak. Well, a like-for-like -like comparison with the Taraco might save you a couple of thousand, compared against a comparable Skoda Kodiak, and the difference is more like a thousand. There are other options, of course, but they're not quite as directly comparable. We'll start with the Peugeot 5008, which sits in the same price bracket, but which only comes with front-wheel drive and has mainstream engines, which are significantly less powerful than those of this Volkswagen. The Land Rover Discovery Sport also sits in the same price bracket, but costs a lot more to run because it's quite a lot heavier and has significantly less interior and luggage space. You could save a little less with a Nissan X Trail, but again, with one of those, you get less interior and luggage space. The Korean contenders in this class have been moved up market and all come with four wheel drive and more powerful engines as standard. Even Sangyong's Rixon, which will feel a bit crude compared to a Tiguan Allspace, but which has standard four wheel drive and much better off road, costs from around 38,000. Though you do get a 202 PS diesel engine for that. Hyundai Santa Fe can't now be had as a diesel and is priced from around 41,500. As for a Kia Sorento, well, at the time of this test, you couldn't get one of those for much less than 50,000. If having considered all of this, you conclude that it is the Tiguan Allspace that you really want, then you're going to need to know just how generous Volkswagen have been when it comes to the standard spec. Well, let's see. Starting with the base life spec, well, it's good to know you can get a life at your Volkswagen dealer, even at this level in the range, you get 18-inch alloy wheels, LED headlights and tail lamps, roof rails, front fog lights and alarm and powered heated mirrors. Those headlights have dusk auto sensors and washers, plus there are rain-sensitive wipers and you get the all-round parking sensors, 
rear privacy glass, adaptive cruise control and alarm and XDS electronic differential lock, which delivers improved traction and handling. Inside with the life spec, you get all the features you'd know to expect at this price point. Things like three-zone climate control and 10-inch digital cockpit pro instrument screen and ski hatch. Media provision is taken care of with the base spec by a Discovery Media setup, which via a touch-sensitive 8-inch central dash screen gives you access to Volkswagen's App Connect smartphone mirroring system for wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto connectivity. Additionally, that monitor delivers navigation, Bluetooth, streaming and internet, an 8-speaker DAB system and an in-car shop via which you can make online purchases. Plus, there's always an app, isn't there? In this case, a WeConnect Plus app, which will allow you to interact with your Tiguan Allspace via your smartphone when you're away from it. You'll be able to do things like lock or unlock the doors, remotely activate the horn and indicators, get a vehicle status report, set the cabin ventilation so the car is cool or warm when you reach it, and these remote services can also help you locate your car if you've forgotten where you've parked it. There are navigation-based services for online voice control, online traffic information and online route calculations, along with an online destination import so you can transfer route instructions to your Tiguan from your home or office PC before you set off. Petrol station charging points and parking locations can all be accessed through the app, along with online map updates. Plus, you'll be able to surf the world of internet radio, enjoy media streaming and create, in this Volkswagen, a Wi-Fi hotspot. The app will alert you if the car alarm goes off, update you on surface schedules and honk the horn so you can find the car in a crowded car park. And if you've lent your Tiguan Allspace out to someone, it can alert you if it goes beyond a preset geographical boundary or over a preset speed. If you want to go further, then as we said earlier, there's a similarly priced choice of either comfort-oriented, elegant spec, or as in this case, sporty R-Line. Both get you a front grille light strip, Art Velour micro fleece upholstery, sports seats, keyless entry and wireless phone charger, a cabin ambient light system with 30 colours, a park assist set up to steer you into spaces and some key extra driver assist systems we'll brief you on shortly. Elegance trim is recognised by the larger 19 inch Auckland alloy wheels, advanced ID light LED matrix headlights and a panoramic glass roof. The R-Line spec sets itself apart with 20-inch Misano wheels with a body kit with bespoke bumpers, while inside there's stainless steel pedals, Grayson cloth part trimming, a black roof line and R branding. R-Line trim also gets you sports suspension, a driver profile selection driving mode system and a piece of technology that Volkswagen's particularly proud of, Travel Assist. This is a camera and radar sensor controlled assistance system that will autonomously accelerate, brake and steer your Tiguan while maintaining a safe distance to vehicles ahead. Right, enough with standard spec. What about options? Let's start with the driving stuff. On Elegance and R-Line trim variants, you can add in DCC dynamic chassis control, adaptive damping system. And across the range, you can add a head-up display and for easier low-speed manoeuvring, an aerial view camera system. Towers will want the trail assist setup, which helps you to handle awkward towing manoeuvres. What about the media features? Well, the key thing to consider here is the upgrade to the large 9.2 centre dash screen that comes with the Discovery Pro infotainment setup. This includes gesture control and the voice activation feature that can be added into the smaller 8-inch screen at extra cost. As for luxury items, well, you might want to treat yourself to the full Vienna leather upholstery. If the Tiguan Allspace spec you've chosen doesn't feature a panoramic sunroof, keyless entry or rear view camera, you can add those things in too. And for cold winter mornings, you might want to specify the heated climate windscreen. If you don't want to stretch to either elegance or R-Line spec, but want to add into a volume 
life spec model, some of these features you'll find with those pricey trim levels. You can specify things like keyless entry, park assist system to steer you into spaces, powered tailgate, ambient lighting, power folding mirrors and the winter pack with its heated front seats and heated washer jets. What about aesthetic stuff? We'll start with paintwork. Unless you want your Tiguan Allspace finished in the only standard colour solid pure white, you'll need to be paying your dealer more. Probably for one of the metallic or pearl effect colours. We've got Oryx White Mother of Pearl paint here. What about practical optional touches? Well, leave some budget aside for a spare wheel unless you want to be stuck by the roadside with a fiddly tyre mobile kit the next time you get a puncture. It has to be the space saver variety. You can specify a tow bar, of course, and if you do, there's the option of a tow bar mounted rear bike carrier. Bikes can also be carried via a bespoke carrier on the roof. And of course, you can specify a roof box. This is one 340 litres in size. You can have the usual mud flaps and rubber floor mats. And for the boot area, you can specify a flexible boot liner, a boot mat, a boot tray, load bars and a partition grille and a variable folding floor. A dash cams available too. Well, enough with options. Let's take a look at the driver assist systems and safety provision. You'd expect some sort of autonomous braking system of a car of this kind these days and Volkswagen is called Front Assist. And as usual with these sort of setups, it scans the road ahead as you drive. If a potential collision hazard is detected, you'll be warned. If you don't respond or aren't able to, the brakes will automatically be applied to decrease the severity of any resulting accident. For this updated version of the Tiguan Allspace model, this setup's city emergency braking system has been enhanced with pedestrian monitoring, which is more specifically able to identify people or cyclists who might be about to inadvertently step into your path. Every Tiguan Allspace also gets a lane assist, lane keeping system that warns you when you stray out of your lane and applies gentle steering assistance to ease you back into it. The setup incorporates road edge recognition which detects curbs, grass verge and lane markings. You also get dynamic road sign display which pictures speed signs as you pass and displays them on your dash. High beam assist which dips your headlights for you at night, and a fatigue sensor, which senses if you're getting tired at the wheel and will alert you to stop for restorative coffee. If you're avoiding a baseline spec Tiguan Allspace and going for one of the pricier models, you also get three extra camera features. Side assist, which stops you from dangerously pulling out when there's a vehicle in your blind spot. Rear traffic alert, which warns you of oncoming traffic when you're reversing out of a space. And proactive occupant protection, which uses sensors from the front assist monitoring system to detect impending impacts at either the front or the rear, in which in which case the seat belts will tension and all the windows instantly close to help you better withstand the impact. We should cover off the passive safety elements that come included too, which in combination with the camera stuff have helped to justify this car's five star Euro NCAP safety test showing. Their twin front side curtain airbags, though disappointingly you don't get an extra one to protect the driver's knees. There are, of course, Isofix child seat fastenings on the second row bench, though unfortunately not in the third row. Plus there's an active bonnet, a sensor-controlled pedestrian protection system that raises the bonnet away from the engine compartment in a nightmare scenario of an impact with a pedestrian, so as to reduce injuries. We also like the inclusion of the automatic post-collision braking system that recognises when an impact has occurred and brakes the car to prevent it being uncontrollably propelled into oncoming traffic. It's also worth mentioning that one of the features of the We Connect Plus app we mentioned earlier is the emergency call e-call SOS system that in the event of an accident where the airbags are triggered will automatically alert the rescue services with your exact GPS location. 
Other conventional safety features include the normal ESC stability control and ASR traction control systems, plus MSR engine braking control that will stop you skidding if you change down abruptly on a slippery surface. If you do go into a skid, a DSR steering assist feature will help you steer out of it. And you get an ABS braking system further assisted by CBC cornering brake control through the bends plus an HBA hydraulic braking assistant which helps reduce stopping time when you really slam on the anchors in an emergency. Plus like all Tiguans this one gets a hill hold function to stop you from drifting backwards on uphill junctions along with a tyre pressure warning though tyre pressure monitoring costs extra. Overall it's an impressive complete safety showing all very reassuring. You won't be expecting this slightly larger Tiguan variant to be much less efficient than its standard stable mate, and it isn't. There isn't much of a weight penalty in switching to the longer all-space body. In the case of the volume 2 litre TDI variant, it's 112 kilograms, so the resulting impact on fuel returns and CO2 readings has been kept down to about 5%, which is good news because of the figures returned by the standard version of this car were amongst the best in its class. It wasn't very long ago that spacious mid-sized seven-seater SUVs of this kind used to be quite expensive thing to run. Choose your engine carefully and this one shouldn't be. As with the latest Golf, all the power plants in the Tiguan, including the TSI petrol units, now have particulate filters and standard fit. And, as you'd want, all the units on offer now conform to the industry's most stringent Euro 6D temp RDE Step 1 compliant standard. In this film, we've already told you that the petrol plug-in hybrid engine you can get in the ordinary Tiguan isn't available here. And we've also touched on the new 2-litre TDI diesel engine's Evo series redesign, its cylinder deactivation plus its new exhaust turbo fuel injection thermos management systems, all changes aimed at driving down running costs. Plus there's so-called twin dosing catalytic converter technology, which has reduced NOx emissions by up to 80% compared to the previous 2-litre TDI unit. Let's get to the WLTP rated figures. The result of all this engineering effort sees a front driven Tiguan allspace fitted with the volume 150 PS version of the Evo TDI power plant and a manual gearbox return of up to 53.3 mpg on the combined WLTP cycle and up to 140 grams per kilometre of CO2. For the DSG Auto variant, it's up to 49.6 mpg and up to 149 grams per kilometre. If you go for the Tiguan and the 2 litre TDI 150 PS4 motion DSG Auto form, the figure is up to 45.6 mpg and up to 162 grams per kilometre with the 150 PS engine, or up to 41.5 mpg and up to 179 kilograms with the more powerful 200 PS version of that 2 litre TDI unit. If you'd prefer to fuel from the green pump, the version of this car you'll probably be considering is the 1.5 TSI. This unit hasn't been embellished with the fashionable mild hybrid tech, but it still still feature active cylinder technology that, under light throttle loads, cuts off the second and third cylinders for greater efficiency. As a result, a manual gearbox Tiguan Allspace 1.5 TSI can deliver up to 42.2 mpg on the combined cycle and up to 151 grams per kilometer of CO2. A very reasonable showing for an SUV of this size, with the DSG Auto gearbox that likely owners of this derivative are probably likely to want. The figures are 40.9 mpg and 156 grams per kilometer. Opt for any other petrol engine of offer, both the 2 litre TSI petrol units are mated to DSG Auto Gearbox 4 motion four wheel drive. And your Tiguan of course will cost sufficiently more to run. The 2 litre TSI 190 PS model we have here manages up to 32.5 mpg and up to 197 grams per kilometre. For the 2 litre TSI 245 PS variant the readings are up to 31.7 mpg and up to 203 grams per kilometre. 
across the range, the usual efficiency tweaks contribute to these figures. There's an energy recovery set up to reclaim energy that would otherwise be lost under braking or during cruising. And the usual stop-start system to cut the engine when you don't need it, stuck at the lights or waiting in traffic. If your Tiguan has a DSG automatic gearbox, it's also offering a coasting function that at cruising speed will disconnect the gearbox, leaving the engine to idle until you next need it. With the diesels, you'll need to keep the 12 litre tank for the necessary AdBlue additive topped up to keep within sight of the quoted readings. Of course, the figures you'll achieve will depend on a great extent on how you drive. Another area in which the Tiguan aims to assist you. If you have a variant with the driving profile selection set up, you'll have the option of an eco mode that will tweak all your car's systems for ultimate frugality. And if you have a four motion four wheel drive version like this one, use the four motion active control system gives you programmable individual options for either normal or off-road use. And within these, there are individually selectable eco options for things like the drive system, the air conditioner, and even the dynamic cornering lights. The other cost-related facts surrounding this Volkswagen, though, are rather more straightforward. You can expect some of the highest residuals available in the class. The Volkswagen website Residual Value Calculator tells us that a typical Tiguan Allspace Life 1.5 TSI manual model would be worth 47% of its original value after three years. We should give you a feel for your potential insurance costings too. The base 1.5 TSI petrol model is rated from Group 19E. For the 2 litre TDI 150 PS diesel, the groupings are from Group 20E. It's from Group 29E for the faster 2 litre TDI 200 PS variant. For the top petrol models, this 2 litre TSI 190 PS version is rated at Group 28E. The 245 PS variant is rated at Group 32E. As for servicing, well, as usual with Volkswagen models, there's a choice of either fixed or flexible maintenance packages. You'll choose the fixed approach if you cover less than 10,000 miles a year, and with this, the car will typically be looked at every 12 months. If your daily commute is more than 25 miles and your Tiguan or Spouse will regularly be driven on longer distance journeys, you'll be able to work with a flexible regime that you can see you're travelling up to 18,000 miles between garage visits or every two years, whichever is sooner. What else? We like the fact that this misfueling protection is standard across the range, so you won't be able to accidentally put petrol in your diesel Tiguan Allspace. Less impressive is a three-year, 60,000-mile warranty and cover. We can't see why Volkswagen couldn't extend that mileage limit to 100,000 miles, since that's what you get on this mechanically very similar Caddy model. Doing that, though, wouldn't give Volkswagen dealers so much of an opportunity to sell extended warranty packages. There's one for four years and 75,000 miles, or if you plan to see a bit more of the world in this Tiguan, there's a five-year, 90,000-mile package. Whatever your decision, your car will come with three years of pan-European roadside assistance that has no mileage restriction. The paintwork warranty lasts for three years, and as you'd expect, this car is protected by a 12-year anti-corrosion package. As with the ordinary Tiguan model, providing you don't expect this all-space derivative to be among the cheaper choices in the segment, then there's very little not to like here. For the cost of, say, a five-seat Audi Q5 or a Mercedes GLC, you can get yourself in this seven-seat Volkswagen, a family SUV with almost equal badge quality but quite a lot more versatility. What's not to like? All the established Tiguan virtues remain high residuals, impressive efficiency and strong build quality. And as ever with this model, there's an extra dash of polish in everything it does. That will make you feel as good when you open the bedroom window as when you are when you're behind the wheel. It's just as well as that is the case because if it wasn't, it would be tempting on the test drive to start considering other more affordable options in this segment. Primarily, perhaps, the kind of Skoda Kodiak or the Sayet Taraco that delivers pretty much all the same engineering for a little less. But you can't really imagine a Kodiak or 
Taraku or for that matter any other well specified rivals like Nissan's X Trail or Peugeot's 5008 ever being bought as an alternative to a premium badge SUV in the D segment. A Tiguan Allspace might be. That's the difference. Are there other issues aside from price? Well, some rivals are slightly more spacious. Then there's the annoying lack of ISOFIX child seat fastenings in the third seating row. Otherwise, though, this is a very complete product indeed. It's sufficient to run, easy to live with and practical to own. Other segment alternatives make similar claims, but after trying them following a Tiguan Allspace test drive, you might end up feeling you're prepared to pay just a touch more for Volkswagen ownership. And we'd understand if you did.